welcome you all students uh, i am continuing with quantitative genetics in this video i'll be talking about transgressive inheritance which is very very important for breeding crops so what is transgressive inheritance how to understand it or define it so if i ask you a question how our farmers used to store the seeds for sowing for their next season you would say that they used to collect they used to select plants which would show best phenotypes from these plants they would collect the seeds see there they are not bothered about the p1s which they had sowed they are again selecting the best f1s in the f1s there will be many different varieties as far as quantitative traits are concerned so in the next generation when they sow these best f1 for the next generation what do you expect in the f2 as far as quantitative principle is concerned we should expect that the plant should produce in 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 but what happens in this in this quantitative traits is few plants will be produced or in the f2 there will be no formation of no formation of parental types for few quantitative traits instead they will produce they will produce traits which will be completely different from that of the parental types so these traits which deviates completely from that of the parental types whether it is in the form of dominance or in the form of recessiveness in the f2 generation from the p1 through the f1 is called as transgressive inheritance so to be simple in the f2 generation we will not find we will not find any parental types which were selected to get the f1s is that clear so what happens then in this we will get in the f2 we get either the best than the p1s or in case some cases worse than the p1s so both will be present best and the worst but will not have in few quantitative traits not in all quantitative traits in few quantitative traits will not have the parental characters observed at all is that clear this shows that the f2 will not follow the quantitative principle that is 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 in which the the intermediates or the recombinants should vary between the parental types got it so both parental types are expected but they will be absent instead okay instead instead few groups exceeding the parental types will be observed is that clear so and these these variants which are the new progenies or new hybrids are genetically stable genetically stable means they will retain the heritability heritable capacity or heritability which gives the farmer or the scientists an option to choose them as new breeds or seeds for the next generation is that clear so to simplify it i'll take this example in this you see in the p1 there are five different varieties so you can consider this as f1 or sorry f2 from the p1 got it so here if i consider it as a quantitative trait the range you can see is 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 so in this i will consider them as p1 and i'll start the experiment okay i'll start the experiment in that i will select a 10 centimeters p1 and a 5 centimeters p2 which are the parental types now from these parental types what is the f1 expected the f1 expected will be the intermediate of both the parental types which is of course which is a, which has an height of 7.5 so now 
I will cross these F1s. So what is the expectation at the next F3? The expectation is that there should be again the parental combination and the intermediates which should be in the ratio of 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. But do we see that? No. Instead, we are seeing transgressives or transgressives which are deviating from that of the parental types. Instead of 10 centimeters, there has been plants which are showing about 15 centimeters and the limited height at the recessiveness is 5 centimeters. But here we are getting plants of 3 centimeters. So these are the two ex extremities which are deviating from the parental types. Rest of the varieties are falling in between the 3 centimeters and the 15 centimeters. So the F, so the P1s are lost. So in this, we can select the best 15 centimeters if you want to select the height as the quantitative for the next generation and remove all the 3 centimeters. So that in one side we can we can delete the complete recessiveness or negatives and only retain the positives. Is that clear? Got it? So next, how these types are formed usually? Why will these transgressive appears? Because of two reasons. Because of the molecular events which takes place. That is, one is additivity. So in the last class, we had discussed what do you mean by additivity? That is addition of all the dominant genes, bringing all, grouping up all the dominant genes, which increases the pigment, that is the redness in case of kernel color in wheat. In that experiment we learned. The second one is recombinants. So if the dominant genes are distributed in two parental types, intermediates, that is in the F2s, if we bring them to, if they come together by the process of recombination, by the process of segregation, okay, by the process of segregation, then new varieties, new progenies will be formed, which will be again transgressives. The next is chromosomal rearrangement. Sometimes what happens, the loci can be linked, okay, they will not segregate. But if these chromosomal rearrangement, either mutation, okay, in mutation, deletion, duplication, translocation, if any of this chromosomal change structural chromosomal changes takes place they may they may result in forming a chromosome which will forming chromosomes which will contribute to transgressives got it different from the parental types next is transposable elements it's a very very important phenomena in case of plant breeding as we know very clearly where the genes where certain sequences shifts from one position to the other position within the genome. So when they shift, if they get new promoters and answers, what they do, the expression of that particular gene becomes high or in the opposite, if they shift to position where there are no operators or enhancers, okay, there are no proper regulatory elements, then the transcription of that gene becomes less. So like this, two different possibilities are, two different possibilities are possible. The next is one more event which we can consider is DNA methylation. So if methylation takes place, either there can be expression of a gene or repression of a gene. This also, this, this mediation will not change the genotype but will alter the expression of the gene in that particular generation resulting in a different expression or different variation getting formed in that particular generation. So ultimately, all these events will end up in giving rise to a new variant, which will be different from, different from that of the parental types. Is that clear? So like this, transgressives appear in the F2 generations. So the task of a breeder is to understand these concepts very clearly and bring them, bring the best genes together, get an F1 which will be a completely new, new breed, okay, new breed for the next generation. Is that clear? So, this you can see here, take this and take this example. In this example, you see in the F1, that is, which is formed, 
there is a cell there I'll select P1 and P2 which are two extremities which is seen in the F2s okay there will be P1 from the P1 we have got F1 from the F1 there is a breeding which has taken place and in the F2 there is 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 generation in that I am picking two parental types I am considering two varieties are parental types one with the uh, this one and this part another one is with this part so we can see in this case that there are four sets of genes four sets of genes which are responsible for which are responsible for cold resistance or cold tolerance got it so if i want a plant which will be completely resistant for cold then i have to get all the dominant genes together so in the f2 most of them will have a distributed genotypes so bringing them is not an easy task but somehow it is possible if i keep on crossing with crossing keep on crossing between the intermediates and the parental types so there is a possibility that i end up in bringing all the dominant genes into one parental types and if i cross this parental type then i will get again two different types of offsprings one is with all the dominant genes on one side and all the recessive genes on the other side or you can say favorable genes on one side and non-favorable genes on the other side this result in forming a variety which will be completely resistant to the cold is that clear so you can you can expand this to many different quantitative traits okay either insect resistance yield okay sugar so many things so many different varieties can be considered and bred is that clear so next is selection of transgressive traits the here i am just explaining how is it possible how we will do first the p1 and p2 is selected and from that we get the f1s as i discussed in the last slide okay so in that f1 when we breed f1 into f1 we get two varieties one is the best with all the cold resistance gene another one with with without unfavorable genes one is with favorable genes another one with unfavorable genes now we can separate the two very clearly from rest of them and retain the one which will which we which we want where if we want the cold resistant we can keep them if we don't want the cold resistance we can remove them is that clear so to do this first what we have to do we have to do an experiment in the same environment keeping the parental types the recombinants keep selecting the recombinants and keep meeting them with the parental types so that at last we will achieve a mean which will have more rest, more uh, favorable alleles and from these favorable alleles we will again cross them and see compare them with the parental types and end up getting the best p1s for the next generation is that clear so i think you people would have understood how and in what mechanism we get transgressives and how we can use them in selecting the breeds for the next generation sometimes these transgressives are affected by the environmental conditions naturally transgressives are formed because of the environmental conditions but the human influence increases that is that clear resulting in bringing change at the genomic level either in the form of interaction and these interactions will may end up will in may end up in giving rise to new species itself is that clear but ultimately it is a very good option for the breeder okay so in the next classes coming classes we will be discussing more about breeding okay breeding so to start with breeding we have to search for the transgressives okay so thank you all so kindly go through the video 